Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be exploring how to use soft cloth physics on your Daz Genesis 2 character in iClone. So we're going to be trying to recreate scenarios like you see here with all of these uh, characters, these beautiful um, flowing cloths from uh, some of our users. We're going to be trying to recreate this. I'm going to show, be showing you how to use uh, weight maps and various other techniques as well to get the results you want. So essentially what we're going to be trying to do here is uh, recreate this Daz Genesis 2 character we see here. Um, dancing around in our scene, uh, twirling her baton or uh, whatever that is. And I'm going to be showing you how to apply these soft cloth physics to the dress. This dress also comes from Daz. And apply some uh, G6 uh, physics hair to your Daz Genesis 2 characters as well. So let's take a look at this character. Uh, first of all, let's switch over to our preview camera here, since we don't want the camera switching around on us there. I just had there to make it look a little bit more beautiful. So here we have our uh, Daz Genesis 2 character in some sort of Statue of Liberty pose. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove all of the physics animation that we currently have recorded. Now pay special attention to these two buttons up here. This is Soft Cloth Simulation and this one over here is Rigid Body Simulation. So when you have these disabled, which they are right now, any animation that you previously recorded, uh, which is the animation I recorded earlier, will be played on your screen. So this is the animation that I recorded earlier. Um, rather the physics results I guess you should say I recorded earlier and if I select that or rather if I want to remove that animation I can't simply right click the character and select remove animation I have to go into my timeline so I'm gonna press F3 go into my timeline and we have our character is actually named root node zero it's a very uh, beautiful feminine name root node zero and what we need to do is we need to go into root node zero and we need to go down to soft cloth the soft cloth track here and in soft cloth, if I just hold the alt key and uh, scroll out a little bit, you can see uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff outside our project view, but just uh, worry about the stuff between these two green flags right here. Don't worry about all that other stuff for now. We have this soft cloth um, physics animation. So we'll just go again over to here. And if we delete that, if we take that and we delete it, our character will have no, will no longer have any soft cloth animation on her dress. So if I just play back now, you can see her legs are popping through her dress, which doesn't look too cool. Um, maybe if uh, she's some sort of superhero that has powers to uh, you know, go through material, it would be cool. But in this case, we're not dealing with that. So what I'm going to do is just close this down, and I'm going to reinitiate our soft cloth simulation. We're going to do our rigid body simulation as well. And now if I play back, this will be the live simulated result uh, of our dress, and this will be recorded as a motion clip. So if I press F3 again, go into the timeline, you can see that the duration of the motion clip is the same as the duration of my project, which I played back. So there we go. Uh, if you want to have a better physics result, I would suggest you know, going back to the very beginning and going to by frame modes. This is a, a frame mode that will actually take a bit more time to calculate, but the physics results will be a lot more accurate. So how do you apply physics, uh, soft cloth physics to your Daz character's dress in iClone? Well, the answer to that is basically weight maps. So let's go over here to our physics tab when our character is selected. And let's go over to so select this big button called edit weight map. Now in edit weight map, we need to make sure that we have the right material selected first of all. So you can actually just use this picker button or use the B hotkey. And we want to select the character's dress which is already selected. It's called Dress Fabric right here. You can see the diffuse map right there. And then we have this weight map, which looks fairly simple. It's just a simple gradient. And let's go ahead and launch that into Photoshop and take a closer look at it. So when this launches in Photoshop, I'm just going to press alt Control i to uh, bring up my image size. You can see it's just a 512 by 512 map. And I'm going to actually bring in another map here to compare this to. So let's Alt-Tab back over to uh, iClone. Where are we here? There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring not in the diffuse map, but I'm going to bring in our UV reference map. So I'm just going to select that, and that's going to launch our UV reference map in uh, Photoshop as well, or your photo editing software. This one is just the straps. We can just close that down for now. Now take a look at this one as well. If I alt Control i it's also 512 by 512, and you might notice some similarities between these two maps right here. Notice that uh, the positioning of this weight map kind of correlates to the dress fabric one over here. So I'm just going to press Control A, Control C to copy it. I'm going to paste it in this uh, image here, another layer, and let's just bring down the opacity a little bit, and let's take a look at how it correlates to the image underneath. Notice that where the black areas are, 
that's where no physics results will be active. So there'll, there'll be no physics results, no physics animation taking place in the black areas of the weight map. However, in the white areas of the weight map, the stronger the white is, the more the uh, fabric is going to be uh, influenced by physics, by soft cloth physics. So you can notice around the belt area right here is completely black and there's nothing going on there. So if we wanted to bring in our own uh, weight map, for example, what we need to do is we need to use our UV reference map here as an example. So let's go ahead here and let's just delete our uh, background image right here. And let's create a new layer. This layer is going to be our uh, new, new uh, weight map. So let's go ahead and just uh, fill it in with black for now. Uh, let's go to our fill tool right here, paint bucket tool, and fill it in with black. And let's uh, make this layer invisible right now. I want to make sure the selection area is the area that I want to be influenced by physics. So I'm going to use our selection area rectangle right here. And we can even just uh, you know, increase the opacity on this so it's a bit easier to see for you guys. Um, there we go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this area right here. Um, so that's the area I have selected. And then I'm going to use my gradient tool, which is in the same uh, selection as the paint bucket tool there. So I'm going to use the gradient tool. Make sure you have a uh, white to black fade. Um, you can click up here to uh, use a preset. This one's just the foreground to background, and it just resets it to uh, our foreground is black, our background is white there. So this is what we have right here. And if you want to modify, you know, the gradient, you can uh, use these sliders right here to modify them any way you see fit. Um, so this is just our basic gradient right here. Say, for example, we wanted to have, you know, more flapping about. We wanted to have more freedom for our, uh, for our dress. We'd probably want to make it a bit more white. So we'd have a little bit more white area in our weight map and very, very minimal, very, very minimal black area right there. Let's go ahead and try that gradient. And then let's just simply click. From the uh, we can click anywhere really. Uh, let's click from the top here. And this is going to be where the black begins, and we're going to go down here to where it's the whitest, right there. We can even go below it like that a little bit, and you can see there's our gradient right there. That's maybe a little bit extreme, so let's go ahead and try to undo that. Control Z, and let's try to uh, bring a little bit more black in there. Uh, maybe something like this would be a bit more reasonable, and then let's go OK and uh, try that one more time. So again, start where the black is right here, and then we have our uh, go down here. So that one looks a little bit more reasonable. And uh, actually, what we want to do is do that on the separate layer. We did it on layer one accidentally there. So layer two, let's just delete that and just show layer two here and do that gradient one more time. It's only going to affect the area in the selection box there. So there we go. And then we can just take this layer and uh, delete this layer that we don't need anymore. And so now we simply have, I'm just going to press Control D to deselect this. So here's our new weight map. So that's just a simple way to, uh, you know, create a gradient. Um, just align it with your uh, UV map and you should be fine. So let's go ahead and press, uh, or go to File and Save As. And I'm going to save this to the desktop. Make sure you save your weight map as a JPEG file because that's what iClone will accept. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. Go ahead and save. And then I'm going to go back into uh, iClone over here. And we're going to load up our weight map. So just double click on that uh, weight map channel there and just load in our new weight image right here. And you'll notice it's a little bit different, maybe a little bit grayer, a little bit less extreme than our previous weight map. So let's just go ahead and give that a shot. Let's close this down and then uh, play back. So this is the results of our new weight map. You can see it's uh, fairly decent right here. Let's just try the real time actually, just to make it go a little bit faster for you guys. So let's go into a real time playback mode here. So we have a little bit of uh, you know breakthrough on that knee there. And so you see maybe this weight map is a little bit too stiff. So the, leg, the legs are breaking through. It's a little bit too dark. You'll notice that it was darker than the previous one. So maybe we weren't totally accurate on the weight map. We'd have to make it a little bit whiter just to have things fluttering around a little bit more. So let's go back into uh, Photoshop right here. And let's again use that selection area right here. You can just uh, you know do a quick selection around that uh, area right there. And then let's go ahead and use our gradient tool one more time. And this time, let's make a lot more white. So we're just going to have something like that. And uh, very little black. We'll make it a bit more extreme. And let's go ahead and, within the gradient area, just make a bit more white like that. And that should be fine. And let's go ahead and save this as a uh, JPEG again on our desktop. We'll call this test weight. You can't see there. Wait, I think I mistyped. There we go. Test weight B. Save that to our desktop. 
And then let's go back into iClone and load it one more time. Let's go back to our beginning again here. And edit weight map and load that new weight map in. Weight test weight map B. And see this one will be a lot whiter. Should be than the previous one. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and try and play this one back and see if it, make, it makes a difference right there. Notice that now we have the weight map. It's a lot uh, softer. There's no, um, you know, legs breaking through the uh, the fabric and everything like that. Simply because the fabric is now a lot uh, more influenced by the physics and it's flopping around a little bit more. It's not as stiff as it was. Now, in addition to the weight maps, you can also use these uh, cloth presets down here as well. We have presets for cloth, hair, and wind. Let's use the cloth ones first. Let's use something like this leather preset. So I'm just going to simply double click that one. And what that's going to do is that's going to apply some different properties to my fabric. And we have a separate tutorial that covers all these properties here that you, you can uh, check out. Uh, generally, you can mess around with these uh, at, at your convenience and find all sorts of different results. But let's go ahead and try this with the, the leather look and see how it looks a little bit different than the previous one. Notice now that the uh, leather, it's a little bit stiffer. Um, you know, we don't have as many wrinkles in the fabric. It looks a little bit stiffer. And that's kind of what you'll get when you uh, use leather or a, or a stiffer fabric like denim as well. Let's try something uh, to count to uh, show you a different example, the opposite end of the spectrum. We can use something like uh, linen. And when I choose linen, notice that a lot of these values will change down here from what they previously were. But we should have something that uh, flips around a little bit more, has a few more wrinkles in it. Um, this one may be a little bit stiff. Let's try, go ahead and try satin. Satin, you should be able to see the result a little bit better. This will be a more uh, interesting fabric. So let's, let's load, load in the satin there, and you can see the elasticity is a lot higher. And let's go ahead and uh, play this one back. You can notice there's a lot more bouncing and a lot more uh, wrinkles in the fabric than there was with the leather. And if you, again, play this back in uh, by frame uh, mode, it'll actually give a much better result, and you'll be able to see the difference a lot better. So if you go to by frame mode and just kind of play back, Notice this one's a lot bouncier, a lot more satin-like, I guess. You won't see leather normally reacting like this. Notice there's some very nice wrinkles going on there, whereas the leather was very stiff. So again, you can use those presets as well, and those will modify all of these property values to your specifications. So aside from the uh, weight maps on your dress, your character's hair will, can also have uh, weight maps as well. So let's take a look at our character's hair. I'm just going to go into the scene tab here. And under avatar, we have our beautifully named root node uh, zero in parentheses there. And she has some long wavy hair. Let's take a look at the long wavy hair and edit the weight map for that. Now you can notice that the weight map here is decidedly more complicated. And if I load the uh, UV map for this uh, long wavy hair, it's kind of hard to tell what's what, you know, which direction is what direct, which direction. Uh, so you won't be able to kind of use the UV map as a reference uh, in most cases, but you can go back into iClone here and let's uh, load up the opacity map. So if I launch the opacity map, you can see that we can tell that this area down here are the ends of the hair, the end strands of the hair, and this area up here we want to be less affected by physics because this stuff won't be bouncing around as much. And if we compare that with the uh, weight maps, uh, I think we didn't load the weight map. Okay, let's load that weight map, close down the other ones. If we, uh, whoops, we don't need to save that. If we compare that with the uh, hair weight map, let's just launch that, real, launch that real quick. Notice that we have, you know, more of an effect down here. But notice that it's a little bit more gray. There's not as much white, so the hair won't be stretching as severely as it would. And you notice that that kind of corresponds um, with the various layers of hair. Uh, now, hair is a bit more complicated. Uh, it'll probably take you a lot longer to create an accurate weight map for your hair, um, depending on the results you want. So you can actually just go to uh, um, iClone here again and use those different uh, hair presets as well. If you have uh, you know long hair like this is, you can use this uh, um, straight or wavy uh, hair right here. These are different presets for different types of hair. In addition to that, we have a number of different uh, hairs included with our G6 Empowerment Pack as well. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity to delete my character's hair and uh, shave her head there. And let's go ahead and apply I'm going to open my explore window here with the G6 uh, hair pack included. And let's go ahead and just apply a uh, long ponytail to our character. So all we need to do is click and drag that onto our character there. 
and it'll load up on our, our Daz Genesis 2 character. Now, because it's not a, a G6 character, the hair may need a, may need a little bit of uh, repositioning. Um, she kind of looks a little bit strange there in the front. Now, let's change from the world axis to our local um, axis by pressing the W hotkey again here. Now let's just move this a little bit forward. I think that should be fine. She looks okay from that side as well. Okay, I think that's good. So this hair will automatically be attached to our character. You can see it says long ponytail. And if we play back, now we have this kind of long ponytail, really funky looking hair. And when she spins around, it'll be extra cool. There you go. That long, uh, long ponytail spinning around right there. It looks uh, much, much better. Let's go ahead and pause that. Let's take a quick look at the weight map on the character's, uh, on the character's hair as well. Uh, in physics, Let's go to edit weight map. And notice this weight map is a lot simpler. And if we compare that to the opacity map, it's kind of too small to see right here. Um, but if we compare that to the opacity map, we can launch that uh, weight map. So it's a very simple weight map. And then go back and launch that opacity map as well. You can see that generally, the only areas that are affected are right here. So all this stuff down here is probably her uh, bangs and her, uh, her main hair area and the stuff on the top which is where this um, weight map over here is, this area right here is probably the ponytail right there. So you can probably assume that from looking at the results. So if you want to modify that to make it a little bit more uh, funky or stretchy or elastic or anything like that, you can go ahead and do that by applying a separate weight map. So let's go back to our project right here. And that's about it for applying a soft cloth to your Daz characters. You can apply it to any of your character's clothing, any of your character's dresses. Again, um, to select your material, just use the B hotkey and select uh, like the dress right here, for example. When your character is selected, let's select root node and uh, B, select your dress right there. There we go, dress fabric and all the maps right there. So just select those, because Daz characters have a lot of different maps on them, so just use that B hotkey to select different parts. And by simply applying a couple of weight maps, you can have some pretty cool results like this. You can have your character spinning around, doing a funky dance, her hair flipping around in all sorts of different directions. So again, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about how to apply this cool soft cloth physics to your Daz characters, and I hope to see some of your uh, work in the future. So again, uh, thanks for watching.